Hello and welcome to Prairie Pulse. Coming up a little bit later in the show, we'll have an extended film clip of the new documentary from Prairie Public on the 100th anniversary of North Dakota State University's Little Country Theater. But first, our guest is, of course, Bill Law. And Bill Law is the Little Country Theater Assistant Director, well, you're the Assistant Director of Performing Arts for NDSU. Right, right. And of course, work with the Little Country Theater. Now that I've got part of that out, of course, you're not a, you're not a newbie here, a rookie here at Prairie Public. You've been on Prairie Musicians and of course host a show on our radio network, right. a jazz feels, show. This feels like home, that's right. <laughs> so thanks for joining us today though. But as we get started, tell the folks a little bit about uh, yourself and your background. Well, I'm a, I'm a musician actually and uh, grew up in the Fargo-Moorhead area, uh, local product. Made a couple of forays with my family growing up out into the world, but always came back to Fargo. Uh, it's been such a great home base and have had so many wonderful opportunities uh, here as a musician and an educator and so chose to stay, nice place to raise a family. Um, I couldn't think of a better place to live and I keep telling people that. I was, we were talking just earlier about uh, being down at a little football game in Texas not so long ago and a guy on the plane home who lives in Dallas looked at me and says, why Fargo? And it's such a wonderful place to live, and I had to tell him that. You know, cold is just a minor inconvenience. 15-minute commutes, great schools, wouldn't want to live anywhere else. Well, I can understand that, absolutely. Let's talk now about how you got involved with the Little Country Theater. Well, you know, actually, it's an interesting story. I've lived near campus for much of my life, so uh, the campus has always been a part the fabric of India. She's always been a part of my life. I can hear the clock tower bells go off and uh, I could always hear the band practicing, you know, and I could hear, uh, you know, all the goings on, parades and, and things. And we always had a close relationship with India, which included Little Country Theater going back into the, the days when they were using the Lincoln Log Gabin Theater. Um, when I was a uh, undergraduate student at NDSU, um, I went to see and or uh, was participant in uh, in productions uh, at the theater at that time. My girlfriend, who is now my wife of 37 years, um, had a double major in English and theater, so we were always uh, part of the fabric of theater, and uh, it was just always part of life. Okay. Well, with that said, let's talk about uh, the new documentary and what it entails and what people will see. The documentary is the brainchild of a group of people who got together to um, talk about ways to celebrate this centennial of theater at NDSU. Um, it's a very interesting story and um, people like Don LaRue, uh, who's a professor emeritus at NDSU in theater, uh, has devoted a lot of time uh, to the documenting the history of, of theater at NDSU. Uh, he working with people like Martha Olson, who's an alum of the program, and um, Ruth Varland, who's the current head of the program, um, came up with a project um, which eventually became a partnership with Prairie Public Television, Bob Dambach, to produce this documentary about this um, hundred year history. And it's a fascinating story. So it took, uh, it took root very quickly and it was just a matter of uh, organizing all the great stories and you know finding a way to tell that story effectively. Mm -hmm. Well of course as we're setting up here there will be a premiere uh, of the show that will be February the 11th and also the premiere will be broadcast, the broadcast premiere will be on Prairie Public February the 17th at 9 p.m. So I want to get those out and we'll, we'll uh, talk about those a little bit later on. But talk about the early beginnings of the Little Country Theater and especially, I mean, the efforts of Alfred Arvold? Correct. Um, Arvold came to NDSU in the early 1900s. I think the year was uh, 1907. Somebody will correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and was brought to manage the events on campus and had a background in theater and circus and loved spectacle and uh, began to create the beginnings of theater at NDSU. So by 1914, uh, the official, um, the official uh, inauguration of theater at NDSU, of the Little Country Theater at NDSU, um, 
became a reality. And uh, you know, in Arvold's time, he was a man of big vision. Um, he loved and, and really embodied this service to state mission of a land grant university. And he tied everything to Abraham Lincoln. I mean, it was a, a really interesting story. The, the actual um, incorporation of Little Country Theater took place at midnight on Lincoln's birthday. I mean, so everything he did was tied to Abraham Lincoln, which of course, you know, was the origination of the, uh, of the uh, land grant university system, he and Justin Morrill. So uh, Arvold, you know, with him, it was all about um, spectacle. He produced large historical productions all around the state. He organized a student life train that went around the state and would stop and do productions, you know, in small towns. He organized a lending library of, of doable theater that uh, would go out to small towns, you know, on demand. Um, just, you know, it was, it was all about, you know, everything being big, 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 and, and, and really, truly serving the state. Um, he was responsible for what is now the El Zagel golf course at, um, you know, in, in North Fargo being rescued from becoming the city dump. You know, he saw it as a natural amphitheater. So what do you do? You produce a, uh, like a Wild West, you know, production, you know, with live wagons and horses and thousands of people would come out and see those kinds of things. Well, you talk, how, how was he able to do that and bring uh, artists like, uh, you know, uh, the Von Tra Trapp family, I believe, and I mean, he was able to do all this. Well, he traveled. Mm -hmm. um, he got to know people. He was a big personality. Uh, uh, rumor has it he walked around campus and wore a cape and, you know, he cast a big shadow. I mean, he was larger than life mm -hmm. and had a big vision for, um, everything that he did. He didn't have any small plans. So it would only be natural that he would find a way to, you know, engage and meet, you know, the, the biggest stars of the day. People like Burl Ives and the Von Trapps and Rachmaninoff. I mean, it was, that was standard fare, you know, on the Lyceum series at North Dakota State. Actually, what was NDAC at the time, North Dakota Agricultural College. Sure. Well, tell us about the small, I guess, sort of intimate theater that was the original Little Country Theater and where it was located? Well, the one that we refer to as the Lincoln Log Cabin mm -hmm. is on the upper floor of Old Main. And it was literally turned into a log cabin facade in this, I'm going to call it a big room, but by theater standards, a small room. And, um, you know, it's got a stage and it's got stairs with, you know, with... Um, text from Lincoln's speeches, and it really literally looks like you're in a log cabin, but you're on the main, you're in the main administration building at the university. Uh, and it's just the most uncanny thing. And from my youth, I remember going to a show in that theater, and for the life of me, I couldn't remember, I was young enough, I couldn't remember where it was. I thought, it was like a log cabin, but it was like in a dream, you know, it was a log cabin. And when I started at NUSU about nine years ago, um, my HR session was held in the Lincoln log cabin. You know, they, they were taking people up. There's a, a, a limited uh, number of people due to fire code. There's not a there's not enough egress to uh, accommodate a, a real audience. Yeah, I know because we've had some crews up there. But it's we understand the limitations. It's, but it's uncanny. Okay. You, you can have 11 people up there. <laughs> uh, what well, talk about uh, Fred Walsh? What what kind of impact did he have on the theater? Well. Arvold, um, the Arvold era ended in the early 1950s, you know, coincident with the coming of Fred Walsh. And Fred had a more, what I'm going to say, a more traditional background, um, professional theater, summer stock, and, you know, had done more conventional theater. And he came to uh, NDAC with the idea of creating a, a more professional style of theater at at Indy, NDSU. And um, so his, his rather than doing the, the, the giant spectacle, you know, Fred was more interested in theater itself. And, um, you know, so under his, under his tutelage, 
they actually developed the academic department that has become the theater. There wasn't a degree in theater at the time prior to that. And um, under his, you know, with his push and his connections, he was able to get Askenaze Hall built, which was the first theater building. And I believe that was the first public-private partnership uh, that, you know, leading to a building on campus uh, in the history of NDSU. And uh, so he changed, he changed the direction of theater entirely. Okay. And what about Prairie Stage? What, what is that all about? Prairie Stage was a summer tent theater opportunity for NDSU students. That was another service to state engagement and training ground um, for students. The students would actually go out and function as the entire cast, crew, and, and labor force for tent theater around the uh, state. Uh, they would functionally be roustabouts. They'd have to erect this giant theater tent and then build their stage, you know, drag in all of their props and costumes, and they would do three shows a day uh, at various locations around the state. So it provided a living laboratory, you know, for students in the summer months, in the off season. Um, and again, with service to the state. Um, and in many ways, both Arvold and Walsh, you know, embody that that land grant mission, you know, of service to the state. Mm -hmm. And of course, that you said uh, Arcanaise Hall is now where all the plays are, are take place. Correct. Uh, what are your best memories of the Little Country Theater? Well, you know, I think about uh, oh classes with people like Don Larue, all of the characters, students, and faculty. Uh, the dignity of, of Fred Walsh. Um, as I mentioned before, my wife was a theater student, so we had lots of uh, friends, you know, from the department. Uh, I remember, remember playing in a pit, uh, pit orchestra for a Don LaRue production of Candide, uh, which was really a spectacular thing for me, discovering that, that wonderful musical, you know, at that point in my life. Uh, just just lots of really, really great memories, hmm. you know, about the shows. Sure, but can you talk about the impact of the theater it's had on some of the students uh, who performed there and then, of course, gone on to graduation? Oh, yeah, you know, and, and it, in, in various ways, too. I mean, you know, we always think stereotypically about students going on to theater careers, and while some have, some have used that theater background um, to aid themselves in becoming very successful in business. They're great communicators. Um, we've had students go on to have Broadway careers, students go on to have, you know, to be uh, technical help and stage directors. Um, it's, it's amazing how theater prepares students for careers outside of theater. You know, great communicators, they learn how to do things, they learn how to build things, learn how to make things happen, and in the end, you know, they can deliver it you know, so convincingly. So it's a, it's a wonderful background for all students. Hmm. Well, I know that in this documentary, we sent a crew to New York to interview uh, David Boyd, Janet Dickinson, and, and Ryan Metzger. Uh, what was it like for you to see these graduates uh, actually working, I guess, in their well, chosen profession? I think it's profession? very exciting. Um, Janet was a contemporary of mine, and uh, it's really exciting to see somebody like her have a long, successful career as a Broadway artist. Uh, she's done very, very well. Ryan's younger than I am, so I've, I've known him and seen him since he was in high school, and um, you know, he was destined you know, to be in the theater, but it's so exciting to see them really maturing as artists and having great, you know, great careers. David, same thing, just having a great career and, and really involved in theater. Okay. Well, uh, can you talk about the students' experiences they'd have uh, at four years at NDSU and, and how they can gradually even get involved with the, the Little Country Theater? Well, everything we do is open to all students at NDSU. Um, you know, we don't have a, a requirement for everybody to be a major to participate. So um, that's an important message. And again, it's, it's sort of service to the state, um, and service to the university. When a student is a theater major at NDSU, um, you know, they're looking at a comprehensive training uh, in theater, which means you build sets, you learn how to paint, you learn how to hang lights, you learn how to do sound, you learn how to do makeup, you learn how to do costumes, props, stage manage, you know, and act on stage. There's not just a direction 
where I'm only going to act, I'm only going to do this. And of course, everybody um, eventually has their favored thing, and um, you know they'll gravitate towards that role, you know, more seriously. And as they go on in, in with their professional careers, you know, we'll we'll choose more narrowly focused paths. But truly, um, they're getting a comprehensive background in theater, and uh, so when they go out in the world, they know how to do a whole bunch of different things. Yeah. So I mean, is that that is a goal of yours to have them that well-rounded correct. In, involved? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, t you mentioned some of this a little bit earlier, but can you talk some more about some of the big productions that that you've staged over the years and some of the ones that really stand out? Well, as I mentioned before, Candide in Askenaz Hall, which doesn't have a pit and constructed a pit orchestra, uh, pit for the orchestra. Um, there was a great production of Fiddler on the Roof uh, in the mid-1990s with um, theater alum Steve Stark as Tevyev. Uh, that was a big hit. We've done in Oklahoma, we've done Chorus Line. Uh, last spring we did a production of Nine to Five, the musical, and you know these are big shows uh, drawing lots of audiences. Some of those productions are done because of size in Festival Concert Hall, which is just adjacent to and has a pit. Um, and then small shows. Some of the some of my favorite shows have been uh, staged in the uh, Walsh Black Box Theater, which is just a little just a little room, and such intimate um, such intimate shows that you really get the character of the show. Okay. Well, and I know uh, you know you had funders and some people to thank, and of course, uh, yeah, you've got uh, uh, the Excuse premiere. Me. It's going to be a public premiere. That will take place on February the 11th at Askenaz Hall, so the public's <clears> invited. <throat> but uh, who who helped make the documentary possible? Well, it was a partnership with Prairie Public, uh, North Dakota State University Foundation, Centennial Fund, uh, Daryl and Jean Schroeder, um, and uh, the NDSU Division of Performing Arts. Uh, it's been a really wonderful opportunity for us to look back in a positive way and to see where we came from and to hear all these marvelous stories from people like Albert Arvold, Alfred Arvold and uh, Fred Walsh who had such long-term uh, big impact on the community, on the university, on students. You know, we still have alums from uh, both gentlemen's eras who've had uh, expressed uh, tremendous uh, gratitude and thanks for the impact that both of those gentlemen had on their on their whole lives. We're running out of time, but what what's the best thing about your job going going to work and working with the theater? Well, <coughs> sorry, um, I'm the luckiest guy on the planet. You know, a lot of people feel that they're the luckiest guy on the planet, but I think I really am. You know, I get to work with uh, bright young students who are eager to uh, do things and are looking forward to. Uh, you know, the next bright thing on their horizon. I work with bright, talented people, uh, faculty and staff. And I work at a university that's growing like mad, um, being involved in the performing arts. You know, it's, it's really something that's near and dear to my heart. So every day when I get up, I get to do those things that I always love. Well, that's great, it's always nice to do that. If people uh, want, want to learn more about uh, Little Country Theater, where can they go? Well, go to our website. It's www.ndsu.edu forward slash performing arts. Bill, I'm sorry we're out of time, but we're going to go look at some of the videos. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much. Well, let's take a look now at a video clip from the documentary of the Little Country Theater. I think it's particularly important to understand how Alfred Arvold fits in as an exemplar of the institution of which he was a part here, North Dakota Agricultural College. It's a land-grant college and called in those days an agricultural college too. But of course, a land-grant college was never just about agriculture, although that's an important primary mission. It also was about better living, particularly country living. Uh, Alfred Arvold then believed that he had a personal mission as part of the institutional mission to make life better at the grassroots in North Dakota. And being a theater guy, that meant theater. We needed to have theater everywhere across the Northern Plains. 
and we needed people who would learn theater here at North Dakota Agricultural College so they could go out and do it and spread the gospel across the countryside. It was started as a part of the little theater movement across the uh, whole country. The official formation was, was in February of 1914 on Lincoln's, Abraham Lincoln's birthday. There were only a few little country theaters like NDSU when it first started and it was, you know, it was a showcase for um, bringing theater to communities and, and these small units at, at, in, in rural areas. Alfred G. Arvold came to the NDAC campus in 1907. He got his degree in 1905 from the University of Wisconsin. And he was hired in the, the area of, of oratory in the English department. And he was also hired to handle all public programming for the university, so that meant graduations. And he was also really responsible for recruiting bringing recognition to the university. And he was known everywhere. Uh, I have in my scrapbook a little map of the countries that uh, were affected by the little country theater. He was very outgoing, had very big ideas, um, didn't worry about details. As I understand, I mean, it was more the big concept. Again, he came from Wisconsin, the idea of circuses and, and that kind of largeness, I think, was part of his activity. He had this dream of planting uh, lilacs all the way to Grand Forks. And he wanted the university to come to Hillsboro and this way, and we would go to Hillsboro, and there'd be this whole row of lilacs. So every spring we'd have lilac days, lilac queen and queen princesses, and we would go and stop at the towns between here and Hillsboro and put on skits, music things. Well, we just had a wonderful time. And I think the townspeople liked it too, and we planted the lilacs, but they didn't ever seem to grow. We seemed to plant them every year. Then he also went out around the state with the student life train. It went to uh, Devil's Lake, Minot, um, Bismarck, and one of the other cities in the southern part of the state. They did whistle stops all along the way, and they performed um, in these towns. The, the band went, the theater went, the uh, home economics students did the food preparation, the students ran the trains. He was very much about uh, taking theater to the people, uh, creating spectacles, pageants. He, you know, one of his community projects was to turn El Zagel's area into a bowl that could, where he could stage major historical dramas and he'd have thousands of people participating. And he'd have horses and buggies and, and very much about um, making sure that people in the rural environment had opportunities to appreciate cultural things. When uh, they did the historical pageants initially in North Dakota, it was a part of the acculturation for preparing the new immigrants to learn about American history. And they would do these things on the 4th of July, or they would do them where they would be, you know, a huge event, and, and there would be thousands of people, like 30,000 people would come. Everybody would come and watch this. It was about participation. And that was the, the good feelings that you got when you were in a theater production. And they often would say, we weren't very talented, we weren't very good, but he made us feel so good about doing it because we did the best we could. He was truly embracing what a land-grant college does. It has research and it has education, but it has the outreach, and he established outreach. And so he felt that, that the lending library, for example, that he had, he had created could help all these little tiny towns coming from this little country theater. It started with uh, scripts that Alfred Arvold had brought with him from Wisconsin when he came to North Dakota. And he got a letter from a teacher who said, do you have some plays that we might think about doing out here? And so he sent her some scripts. And apparently that teacher talked to uh, 
another teacher. And so he started getting these letters from people in communities who wanted him to, to share with them. So he started collecting more. And so he had a whole big library of, of one-act plays, three-act plays, skits, things that could be performed by the common person without a lot of staging. Uh, but there were also, uh, from what I understand, there were also how-to type packages, how to do makeup, how to build a flat, how to you know, do the different kinds of things that would be a part of these uh, programs. Well, that's all we have on Prairie Pulse for this week. And as always, thanks for watching.